I All think right. so. everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. I'm your host, Anna McNaught, and I am here with Farrah Manley. She is an incredible Photoshop artist, and today she has some great things planned for you guys with Photoshop and Lightroom and Lightroom on mobile. It's going to be a very exciting day. So I see a lot of people joining the chat over here. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Cody Bear. Hi, Matt. Hi, hi, Fairy. Let's see lots of people coming in. I would love to hear where you all are joining us from. I am joining you guys from New Jersey and Farah is joining you guys from Canada. We have a whole international group here. Yep. So yeah, Farah, how are you doing? How are you excited for today? Yeah, super excited. <laughs> Great to be here. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. People are joining us from San Diego, San Francisco, all over the place. Go ahead and pop into the chat. Say hi to Farah. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the schedule real quick for what we have going on today after Farah's stream. So we have the Daily Creative Challenge with Paul Tranny. Um, and then we have branding and identity design with Corey Hall, and then the Adobe XD creative challenge with, with Howard, and then draw along with Kyle Webster. All right, Farah. so let's dive in. I want to get to know you and your work and see your beautiful Instagram page and tell me everything and let's okay, get so started. My name is Farah Manley and I live in uh, Toronto, Canada. So some of you have already like seen me uh, here, uh, know a little bit about me, those joining in for the first time. Hi. Uh, so I'm a full-time architect and I've studied both my undergrad and master's in architecture and I practice that full time. So uh, I have a, a two-year-old, his name is Heston. So it was during my mat leave when um, I started to get really creative with my Photoshop and initially I started a mom blog right over here. And, um, but I wanted to like, you know, really push the boundaries with Photoshop, something that I've already sort of started, you know, in my practice, but I wanted to like, you know, elevate it and push it further. And so that's where sort of my creative, like surreal and whimsical sort of elements started to come in with my Photoshop. And um, yeah, if you guys see my website, this is what I initially had started with, like mom blogging with Heston. You know, you'll see stuff like about, you know, little trips I've done with him, do-it-yourself projects. And then, you know, like even like with certain brands, I do reviews and such. Um, but then um, on Instagram, this is where you will find me mostly. And this is where I get really creative and you guys feel free to follow me. I constantly like, you know, message you guys back if you guys ever comment on anything. But yeah, like you can see, like, I really like to participate with my son and myself in these like, you know, elements and Photoshop and get super whimsical and creative. And then um, I also have like a YouTube account. So <clears throat> if you guys ever wanna see like speed edits and such, like you can find them here. And these are like images, like, you know, from my Instagram that I do the speed edits for. So again, if you guys wanna follow me here, that's awesome. Yeah, and go follow her. Yeah, follow Behance. <laughs> and of course on Behance, like what I love about Behance is the fact that, you know, the stuff you can't see on Instagram, like the high quality, you can sort of pop up here and see like the detail work. So, and again, don't hesitate to follow me everywhere. You know, I'm always going to answer you guys. And uh, so, yeah, that's um, a little bit about me. And in terms of like concept for the next two days, um, I'm going to be splitting it into two different like ideas. I know it says like, you know, changing the mood. So for today, I'm going to be focusing on like a summer sort of image that um, it's going to be like change into like sort of winterize it, especially the fact that, you know, I'm in Toronto and it's winter time here. And if any one of you guys are, you know, um, 
experiencing winter, you guys can kind of create these really winter themed stuff. And tomorrow I'll be changing an image from, again, sort of a day theme to a night sort of moody theme. So yeah, that's that. And I'm just gonna jump right into today's edit. Awesome. I'm super excited to see yeah. what you have going on and the winter theme. I love yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So if any one of you guys are curious, like, you know, what this is, um, this is like sort of me starting off. Like I usually tend to do a lot of like compositing and such, but in this case, because it's a lot about layering and using Photoshop brushes, I just sort of created this using a software that I'm actually familiar with. I don't know if any one of you guys know SketchUp. It's it's almost similar to like, I guess, 3D dimension, like Adobe dimension where you can create 3D modeling. So for me being an architect and stuff, like I kind of wanted to create an image that I couldn't physically go to right now. So I'm like, you know what? I really like this angle. I want sort of like a brownstone theme for this like winter um, scene that I'm going to be creating. And so, yeah, I laid it out here, JPEG converted it. So now I'm just going to start adding layers of brushes and such and I'll share the, all the brushes that I use today and uh, yeah you guys ask me any questions Anna let me know yes so I'm yeah. gonna start feel awesome. free to ask Farah any questions in the yes. chat and I'll be reading them off to her and Farah I love that you are combining your world of architecture yeah. into the, your world of photoshop and kind of pairing these two loves for you I think that's really Absolutely. interesting I feel like I always like get drawn back to like architecture and it's kind of like a unique combination. And again, like using with certain softwares, what I really like to do is like, if you can't create, like if you can't physically do it or create it, you can use like certain softwares if you want to and then have that happen. So, exactly. okay. So when it comes to like winter, I find like images tend to be desaturated a bit. So that's the first thing I'm going to do like with any base image. I just start off with like a hue saturation right here. And again, I have a couple of layers sort of like set up here, but I'm going to go through them with you guys. So yeah, so hue, saturation, yep, tag it and slightly desaturate that. Just because I find like, you know, when you have like the summer, like sunlight, it, it tends to be brighter, but in winter, it does get a bit cold. Very true. Yes. Yeah, definitely. You definitely have those desaturated vibes in the winter and kind of like that gray brown mood that exactly. gets us all down. But at least we can create fun worlds in Photoshop, right? Absolutely. <laughs> create anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is start adding like layers of snow, at least how I would do so. And to do that, I just start off with um, a soft round. That That's kind of like the best way to start filling in like massive spaces. So I'm just going to start drawing them in. And there's going to be like a lot of layering for this because I find like with snow, it's just going to be everywhere. So I'm oh, just going to like cool. kind of show you guys my process like of just starting to add lots and lots and lots of snow for a very winter vibe scene. Yeah. So you're painting it in where it would kind of be like layered on the roof. Exactly. Is that right? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So Ben asks, what countries is your favorite or your what country's architecture is your favorite? If I could get the question Country. out. <laughs> wow, that is so ooh, yeah. okay. Well, you know what? Personally, like I'm really into the Scandinavian, like mm -hmm. very modern, sleek, but they know how to push the boundaries, I find. Like a lot of like case studies like we tend to like look at are like the Scandinavian architecture. And um it doesn't end up always coming to Canada. Canada, watch out, kind of, come on. Like <laughs> there's like so many like great, great buildings on the other side of the world and it just doesn't seem to reach us. Like we're very like specific on, um, I guess developers and such, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't want to say too much. Uh, so right. I'm just going to keep adding more layers to the top. Cool. And are you using a mouse or a tablet? I am using a tablet right now. I'm on my desktop and I find that like I recently had gotten a Wacom tablet and mm. it's like super handy for like, especially like organic shapes like snow or before like forever, I would just use a mouse. And um, so now I'm just like, you know, 
really excited. And I also have like a, a tablet that I do directly draw on. And I tend to um, use that when I'm downstairs watching Heston. So I, yeah, you know, when you're momming and you kind of have to watch him and I also want to work. So <laughs> yes. I have, yeah. So that's literally why I got like a surface, like a uh, tablet for that. And it's been awesome. Um, yeah. So then I'm going to show you guys a brush. And I think this is where like, it really brings like the winter um, snow. So um, it's called, honestly, like I found a lot of these brushes like in Photoshop. You guys let me know if you guys have these brushes, but you can easily download them. And I think a lot of them are under the legacy brush. So this is drippy water. Mm. And I literally, when I discovered this particular brush, like I can like sit here and keep adding snow to everything. I'll show you guys. Um, so I don't know if any one of you guys are familiar with it, but like that, I'm not even doing anything except literally just going right across. And I found this to be a really fun brush to add snow with. It's a little yeah, bit that's like perfect cartoony but illustrative like it but just enough to just be like okay I can see like you know packed snow like so I'm just gonna just keep adding these on and That's I found this so to be cool like, it yeah. already looks like snow up there <laughs> it's like right away when I started doing this I'm like oh my god like this is so great because before discovering like these brushes like um I would try to like use a soft brush and like try to fake like, you know, like snow. And I'm like, it's just looking way too artificial. So, right. And this is just like super playful. And even though my rendering here is a little bit realistic, at the same time, it's just enough sort of cartoony that it works with this sort of snow. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to go with this. It's so fun. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to have to try this brush out now. You've inspired me. I'm like, I'm oh my telling God, you, it like, looks the, so the, good. The, <laughs> yes. And the brushes I'm actually going to show you guys today, like, there's going to be a lot of different options to create like all these like really fun, like winter themed. Like, you'll see, this is just the first one. And I was just like, oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to put them on all yeah. the edges. Looks like people in the chat are loving this brush. <laughs> so fun. And it's called what? Drippy water. It's just really yeah. Fun. Yeah. It's Drippy water for everyone who wants to yes. use this beautiful snow brush. Yeah. I wonder like what else like, um, anyone would use this for because I find this like really great for snow yeah. everyone's like I want to do something with snow now <laughs> exactly even though I personally don't like to really hang out in the snow um I'm more of like I prefer warm weather but I will totally do like winter themes indoors <laughs> yeah like I'm like rushing I already have like a layer I'll show you guys that I've like kind of completed but I find this super like therapeutic I remember just like sitting like kind of and I tend to do um, work on my tablet I have like Heston playing in front of me and I also like just have Netflix on or like a movie and I'm just like sitting and I'm just like dreaming off and it's just a lot of fun yeah I find. yeah it's like the perfect winter activity to just kind of play around on your tablet and do some yeah. photoshop work and be cozy exactly yeah, this is looking so good. Yeah, so I basically start like pretty much packing all the snow on all the edges. I'm just going to quickly do it kind of fast here, but you guys get the idea. I just find it super fun. And I think like overall, like when I was um, thinking about this idea, like overall in the image, it's like imagine like wind is kind of coming from the center and like pushing snow. So there's going to be like edges where you'll have some piled up a little bit high. Oh, fun. <laughs> I'm like, to go nuts sometimes. But like, yeah, like just, you know, a little bit higher. Oh my God, wake up, stop. I, I don't know if anyone else ever has that, where it just keeps its own mind of its own and just wants yeah. to keep going. But yeah, like I'm just going to have like some pile up in the corner because the wind wouldn't be able to like kind of push it off. So yeah, like snow is kind of, could do whatever it wants really because it's so fluffy. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's so important to note kind of where the direction of the wind is coming from and all these little things that help to make your sure. final image look real. You know, like where's the light coming from? What direction exactly. would the snow be blowing from? Exactly. 
right? So in this case, like you can clump up like more snow because they're just going to be jammed up on the top. And, you know, I already have one sort of setup for you guys to show you. And this is what it ends up looking like. Wow. So, and that's again, like using just the drippy water brush and um, yeah, you can already see, like I started to play, like it's kind of fun when you like, you know, in decrease the size and then almost animate it a little bit to make it look like it's kind of falling off, like the edge a little bit. So it feels like there's like movement going on, even though it's a still image. Um, so after that, I actually used a curve to sort of darken the edging here because like obviously like the building there's shadow initially I'll show you when I turn it off like I had it like you know turned on and if you add like a curve to the side and darken it it feels more realistic like there's some shadow on that snow on that edge okay so yep so I added snow and the next brush I'm going to show you guys I think it's called I know I have like already this sort of like prepped up so you guys be like oh okay cool cool you know what I'm going to actually add more snow around the stairs using the same brush so uh, Matt has a question for yeah. you uh, do you render your SketchUp models to high res or no um I do like okay. I end up exporting at, um, so I actually use a plugin called V-Ray that comes with SketchUp to kind of give like the materials a more realistic look and it plays like really well with shadows. You can like control how sharp or soft a shadow can be. And then I tend to export like at least like 6,000. I have it proportioned so that it fits like Instagram because that's where like majority of my um, images tend to go first. And so, um, yeah, so then I would take it and make sure that the resolution is high enough. And I think usually it's like what, 3000 by like, no, 4000 by 5000 to get that proportion for Instagram on Photoshop. So yeah, the resolution, I like to keep it high so that when I zoom in like this, you guys can tell like the quality is there and like it's not pixelated. Right. Yeah. And then I'm going to add, same thing, I'm gonna add snow here. My Wacom is going crazy. Yeah, I mean, I remember like when I first um, I, like created this like base model, I'm like, oh my God, like the railings, like I'm gonna have to like figure oh, out yeah. a mask through it. <laughs> it will take forever, but yeah, I managed to do that before, but yeah, it's funny like, when sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say it's so funny when you start to like create these pieces for for your artwork and then you realize like, oh God, I did this thing where I'm gonna have to work on this one section for hours. Exactly. <laughs> funny. But like I think I was yeah, I mean again, I don't have like a crazy like time where I have to finish something. So I'm like, you know, I take my time and clean out the railings and all that stuff so yeah yeah but, like again like right away like this is already looking like a very winter it's so fun I love it For exactly anyone... like I feel like we can just keep watching like... yeah yeah I'm like very intrigued by it exactly yeah it's super 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 fun for anyone just joining us, Farah is painting some snow onto this beautiful scene that she made in SketchUp. And um, feel free to ask her any questions. She's an architect by trade and does Photoshop on the side. So lots of fun things happening here. <laughs> yes, okay, I'm gonna show you guys another brush that I used on the stair. And this again is like another brush you guys can totally use for snow, it's called let me see. I think we have that under. Okay, so the Mega Pack, I believe, is Kyle Webster's uh, own brush sets. And I can't remember if um, it's like automatically like in when you download Adobe, but I think you can totally get it for free, if I recall. But let's see what's going on. Mm hmm. 
Oh, okay. So yeah. Okay. So pen pressure. Okay. So this is a little bit more of like a, a dry brush. And um, I find that it looked really nice when it's like on like a super thin railing or like anything metal like mm. so. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Like this actually looks better when I use it on my tablet because I didn't have to put so much pressure. But yeah, you can see like it starts to give off this sort of rough, like just bits of snow is like just sitting on top of the metal. Again, like you can already see from far, like, okay, a little bits of like snow would just sort of hold on to like the edges. Yeah, that's so cool. I feel like, yeah, this one's like a really cool brush again that I discovered. Yeah, I love I love how you're putting it in the little curves of the railing there. That yeah, makes, like if wind was so supposed good. to push it in, like yeah, like I, I was like, this is actually really cool. Yeah, this is how I would enjoy winter inside staring. <laughs> <laughs> you like creating winter, not being yeah, in winter. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I feel like. Um, yeah, I'm more of an inside. But yeah. do you, like, you love winter though, right? Like, do you like to do like activities? Yeah, I mean, I'm a snowboarder. So definitely yeah. I, I do like some sort of winter winter sports and whatnot. But um, I definitely, you know, get sick of the snow and the cold as well. And living on the East Coast, it gets very, very yes. tiresome. By March, you know, we're like, okay, I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you kind of want to like switch it up, which I do appreciate that we do get that. It's not like we're always in the cold or always. Right. It's nice to get a bit of both. It definitely makes spring and summer and fall like that much more enjoyable because you really appreciate those times when it's warm and and you love like I, I love seeing like spring start and the little leaves come out in the trees. It's so rewarding. <laughs> My favorite like season two spring just because, you know, it's a reminder that it's just warmer and longer days. Yep. I'm just exactly. happy past the winter, like solstice and longer days. Yeah. Yeah. So See? Matt has another question for you. Yeah. Um, do you use Photoshop for your post-production within your architecture work or do yes. you? Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of like, um, when you have like renderings and like, you know, like the really high quality, like images, there's always post-production, like a lot of the times when you add like people or like uh, landscape and trees and such, like they're always like in Photoshop. I know like there are programs that um, such as like um, 3D Max and I think even Revit, like you can add like people ahead of time and it helps with like shadows and such. But me personally, like I always like coming back to Photoshop and changing like the color tones and adding people in. Yeah. And it gives a completely different look because I find like certain softwares over hyper realize an image where sometimes you just want like a quick sketch or a very collage look, which I appreciate like that Photoshop can do. So, um, cool. yeah, so it's a bit of both. I do like using Photoshop for yeah. architecture. And I think that's how I sort of started, you know, um, diving into Photoshop in general. And that's why I was just like, okay, like let's do something completely different than what I do in my field. And that's why I'm like, if you notice like my work, I'm constantly like floating around or flying or there's like, you know, I'm like, I'm holding a balloon and I'm gone or like Heston's like off somewhere else. And it's like, yeah, it's all about um, what is not real that I really appreciate, especially with Photoshop and my work. And I do appreciate a lot of artists that do the surreal and whimsical too, because it's just like, you can't get that in real life. Exactly. I love that. So, I totally feel you. Yeah. So I had already. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to show you guys an edit that pretty much I had already done. Yeah. So you can see like I, in my tablet, like it actually was a lot softer, which I, I realized. Whereas here, like I'm actually putting a bit more pressure. But, you know, the idea is like there that there's a little bit of like I find like the drippy brush in this case would have been too harsh and realistically like you wouldn't get you know these clumpy snow like up right. against like little delicate like sort of 
stair railings and such. So this was like a really cool brush that, again, I found. Kyle's has some amazing brushes that I feel like, um, I think like I started using these brush more so when it came trying like experimenting with like winter sort of themes. Cause like um, when I'm usually doing like the more summer whimsical stuff, I'm not using a lot of brushes, but like for those like interested in doing like winter or textured like edits, like a lot of different brushes are like amazing. And there's so many that we have that I think a lot of people are not aware of unless you are like an illustrator, someone that directly does art, which I cannot draw. So I did not know. And I'm sure you guys probably <laughs> know a lot more brushes than me and do let me know if there's like other ones that you guys know of that um, are awesome for this. So I'm going to go up here yeah. and start adding more snow. Like that's literally what you guys are going to see today. Lots of snow. Lots of snow painting. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Steph. So nice to see you here. Hey. What's everyone doing? Yes, tell us what you guys are up to today. Share. We're all here just chatting. Painting some snow. I need to definitely check out some more of Kyle's brushes and download yeah. some. I, I tend to just end up like grabbing whatever is in. It's so Japan. true. Yeah. There's Majority of the time, like I think you and I, like we're probably just on like the soft round. Yeah. And <laughs> you know what I mean? And just keep layering it away. Like I, I do that a lot, especially since like our work has a lot of like highlights and lowlights and shadowing. So it's like you can just gradually add um, like uh, colors and such. But like this is like new and I feel like it saves a lot more time because I'm literally just making like thin strokes and it's just doing all the texture for me. Totally. Which, like, usually I didn't even think about it. I would have taken forever. Yeah. Yeah, I always end up like sometimes, as you said, using the round brush and then forgetting about everything else and just finding like little pieces of real images and stuff to put in like as snow if I was doing snow, but I always forget to use brushes. And this is like such a great reminder. <laughs> how do you um, like, how have you done snow? Like, have you done that in any of your edits in the past? I've never actually painted it like this. So I'm, I'm learning a yeah, lot. You're a traveler. Right now. You're going to go cool. find snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is <You> know. so <laughs> amazing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it ends up limiting you because you're like, okay, well, I want snow here, but it's not here in this photo. And like, I use a lot of Adobe stock and stuff too. And, mm -hmm. and, um, kind of placing snow in areas, but I've, I've never done it on like railings. And so yeah. I am like feeling now very inspired. Like you, <laughs> say, like you had like this excellent, like, um, winter, like scene, but you're just like, Oh, you know what? I want to have a bit more snow or yeah, like, you know, on yourself. Like, you know, sometimes you can just add, like, that's what I've done in the past. Like even like a couple of like speckled, um, snow to just add that little bit of like detail. It's kind of cool. Yeah. And I've started to do that a lot. Like now, like a lot of my scenes, like just adding snow everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, you're going to start seeing it in my work now too. After yes. learning this from you, I'm going to be like, okay, here you go. <laughs> I'm not there, but I'm there. Yeah, snowing. it's snowing out here. But yeah, there's a couple of more like brushes I want to show you guys. It's like super fun. Just elevate it even further. But yeah, right now, I'm just having a lot of fun adding yeah. snow. And yeah. um, is anyone asking questions or? Um, we just got a lot of people telling us what they're up to today. Um, nice. Looks like some Ben is illustrating a poster. Uh, Leah is doing the four set of amendments to a newsletter. Um, so, wow. and you're helping her get through the day. Oh, uh, let's cool. see, currently modeling a glass heart sculpture. Um, wow. Lots of cool things that people are working on. And Bruce says, snow is the topic of New York. Yes, it yes. We just got a huge snowstorm. I heard. <laughs> I heard about that. Um, is it still like really crazy there or? Uh, yeah, so not here in New Jersey right now, but um, where my parents live in Pennsylvania, it's still snowing and we have over 24 inches right now. <laughs> wow, because I heard like I have a couple of friends that are in Montreal and I think the snow from New York has gone up the snowstorm and they're just like, yeah, I think it came from New York. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like it was snowing um, a lot. 
Yeah. I think it passed by us, of course. So I'm just oh. masking out like, you know, the railing areas. Like, oh yeah, that's smart. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just easier to just pile up snow, go crazy, and then just start eliminating them just faster that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I can't wait for spring. I know. Me too. <laughs> but honestly, like, um, I think I've been okay just because I have Photoshop. I'm sure like people have started new hobbies or just the fact that like anyone that can be digital, it's been pretty great for them, or at least they've got something to keep themselves busy. I, I do have like friends that um, are having to like, you know, start new projects completely or new hobbies just because they're like, yeah, I used to like travel a lot. I don't know what to do. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy that I have Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's been a, a good year for Photoshop, you know, with our being uh, stuck at home and and kind of everyone being able to get a little more creative this year. Yep. Oh, I know I like mask that up, so I'm going to I like I can't wait to see what this looks like. All of the little fine details and then going yeah. back in and kind of revealing the final piece. Totally. Let me remove that mask. Make it look a little crazy there. And don't forget for everyone watching to uh, join us over on behance.net slash Adobe Live so you can join in on the chat. If you're watching on YouTube or anywhere else that you might be seeing this, be sure to come over so you can chat with us and, and ask Farah any questions you might have or just say hello. Exactly. We like to talk. Yeah, <laughs> we'll talk about anything. Anything. Uh, yeah, so just removing. I'm just going to do like one and then I'll add like the other um, brush layer. I think it was a rough in. Yeah, I'm just going to add some on the railings. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like for all of them because I'm not going to do all of them today. Oh, I can. I really like this brush. And that's the same one you were using from mm -hmm. before, right? For the railing. Okay. Yeah. Anything like, I think like metal, I find this one is nicer than like the drippy water I find is like perfect for like the really fluffy, like if it's sitting on something, whereas this is just like, if the wind was like hitting it up against something and uh, right. And um, what was the name of Kyle's brush that you're using right now? This one is called Ruffin. I mean, these names are pretty fun. Hold on. Ruffin. <laughs> Ruffin brush. Kyle's paint box. Okay, yeah. cool. Under Ruffin the brush. Pack. Yeah. I have a list of um, all the brushes for you guys at the very end. Oh, so that was have great. to stick around and yes, watch. <laughs> yes, stick no. around to the end for the free giveaway. <laughs> Funny. It's actually kind of fun. Like Kyle's uh, coming back on later today as well. So I, I really like watching him sketch as well. Yeah. Schedule. Yeah. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. If snow started to pile up and I believe that one I'm just gonna remove that one turn that one off right I started to show you guys so that wow look at that yeah boom so that's the one that was drippy water and rough and brush like see like mm. the texture like right away when you start to zoom out you're just like all right that's looking quite real yeah. and yeah the fun thing is like I mean I masked it out but like you can start by just like going crazy on drippy water and then just the negative space of the railing. So that saves you a lot of time. And the cool thing with drippy water is um, it looks really organic just because it's never exactly the same. It's just, I don't know how like it's created the brush, but it makes the snow look like it's pretty real. Yeah. And then let's see, which one is this exit brush? Thicker snow. Where did I add this one? Oh, yes. Okay. So then I added again, another layer to make it sort of look like, you know, bigger clumps of snow. Cool. What's piled up. And then we are going to go over. I'm curious what one this is. 
I never and, can tell. Sometimes they're like so detailed because I zoom right in. Right. Um, snow base. So oh, yes. Amelia asks if this technique can be applied to any image. I assume yes, right? Absolutely, yes. Uh, right now, like I'm using it on like a building. So it's like a, a sharp, like sort of object that I find it's easier to add because it's so like organic. Um, but yeah, I think you can add it on anything. Like I almost feel like adding it on like a polar bear or something. You know what I mean? Like you can yeah. totally like, put it on like a polar bear with a bit of like snow, like on his nose or um, yeah. anything. Really. This is probably like the perfect method to use to, for putting it on like pine trees too or yes. something. That'd exactly. Be so cool. uh, I feel like maybe like the drippy water would be f if you had like bigger clumps of snow. And then if there's like branches, like if you have something like a bit more sparse sort of um, where you wouldn't see a lot of clumps, like this is like a perfect example of just adding a little bit on like branches. So again, like I think... Yeah, if it was windy, you would pretty much get like a little bit of like lift up here. So just go nuts. I think this is like the most sketching I've done like in years. Which <laughs> I don't do this like at all, but I found like this is like something completely new for me and I'm like really enjoying it. So like, yeah, if you guys aren't like drawers like me and this is like a fun way to like practice on like an image and then just yeah start like you know go nuts like go free i feel like i had like a lot of fun snowing everything up i love these little details on the window it's making it look so realistic yes exactly because then when you zoom out like i know i've been like so up close but like when you start to zoom out you can just see like you know you would yeah you know, like when the wind like hits like the frames you would get a bit of snow and go creative like crazy love it what do you guys think are you liking the snow is everyone into it what else do you yeah. think farah should do with this image i know you guys give me suggestions <laughs> i'll try to do them but you you know i have like a plan going but yeah yeah don't mess with the plan <laughs> i would love to hear like what like you guys would like use this for yeah like, I had to yeah, that's a great question. Yes. How would you all use the snow brush? Would you put it on uh, trees? Would you put it on a polar bear? Would you put it yeah. on buildings? So let me see where it is that piece. I think I had it up here somewhere. Oh, I know, okay. Um... Boom. There you go. So this was like me doing it earlier. Again, like I find my tablet is is more sensitive. So here, of course, like it looks sharper, but it's like just dusting of snow. Yeah. Um. Let me see which one this one was. There's like another one that was like a really great brush that I was using uh, for this building. Um. I use a different brush. So this one, I changed it up because I felt like... Um, the drippy was getting, it's just like overpowering. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to try just like using the, the drippy brush on this end and try another technique. So this one was called rough ink, if I believe. Rough ink. Yeah. Another one of, okay. So this is uh, under legacy brushes and mm. I think everyone has this. You just have to go under settings and legacy brush. I feel like these brushes used to be in like Photoshop from like years ago. And like, since like the new brushes sort of came in, this ended up kind of being tucked away. And I don't think you usually see them when you first like have uh, the default setting, but you can absolutely like pull them out. Like they've, they haven't taken them out. They've just sort of tucked it away. But yeah, I use a legacy a lot, like legacy brushes. So yeah, you can see this one is almost like a brush. And again, this is just like another way to try to like pile some snow. It just almost feels like you're literally painting. So that's kind of what I was using for the edging. And there's like so many like methods of snow. Yeah, so cool to see. So 
So Matt was asking um, if you create depth in the snow after you kind of paint it in, are you going to kind of start to build some yes. volume to it? Yes. So what I will show you guys, and that's actually more with the model itself. Like what I ended up doing was um, because like once I started layering all the snow, it just became really white and flat. So I then actually add another layer of like this entire image like the buildings but the material was all blanked out to white and only captured the shadows and then i laid in front and used the blending mode multiply which mm. just catches only the black of the shadows so then that kind of gave like depth back from like what was taken because i was adding all the white texture from the snow so like even for example like this this facade you see here it's a lot darker because the sun is behind it so like after i lay all the snow on top i'm going to do the same thing what i did before which is use like the curves um adjustment and then just darken it a little bit so that it just cool. feels like it's a little bit more realistic awesome it's not so so stark white so yeah, yeah that's gonna look that's a good, good question exactly it's always kind of cool to see it come together and see the process of, you know, starting with something that's just flat white that doesn't yeah. look all that realistic and then adding in those highlights and shadows. Honestly, I was like questioning myself a couple of times while I'm doing this. I'm like, this is nothing really like cheesy. It's like, really <laughs> I'm also like used to like kind of realism too, like a lot of my like work and just again with architecture, I'm like, this looks really weird. Unless like you're an artist like that sketches it from scratch like even the buildings then you have like this look so you're just like okay that's pretty cool but I'm just like yeah this is looking really really strange but like I promise you I think by the end of it like when you zoom out you're gonna be like okay I, I believe it this looks like there's like a blizzard happening here or like there's some some sort of snow it looks quite realistic Exactly. But I find like the process was also fun too, just because it's, I find this like super relaxing. I know like right now I'm like trying to speed it up because I'm like, hurry up. I want to see what it looks like. But I'm like, this process alone is like super relaxing and fun. For yeah. Me. And very important to build the base and then to kind of add all the little details. Totally. Exactly. Who here like misses summer? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys miss summer? Or are you guys digging the winter? <laughs> I guess majority of the people, are they from like, uh, I forget, they're like all over the world. So I'm Yeah, sure. we have a an international audience. Yeah. So some people might actually have summer right now. Yeah. They probably never have to draw anything with snow. But you can now if you ever want to. If yeah. You want to feel like a snowman, you can use this. Look at this. My brush is crazy. <laughs> My brush wants to design yeah, I can't wait to try this out. Yeah, I'm going to show you basically when I use the curves as an example. Just clipping it in so that it only affects the layer I was working on. And yeah, just like sort of start to... <laughs> Which layer is this? That's so funny. <laughs> I'm like, what layer? I'm like, eh? Oh, you know why? It's because it's white. So it might even be levels. Let me see. Oh, no, no. Okay. It's just the highlight top portion not the center. But yeah, like you can start like dimming it down so that it actually looks like there's some shadow to it versus mm, yeah. like before it just didn't really make a lot of sense. Definitely. So boom, look at that. It's done. Just to save some time. I'll, show, I'll let you guys know what brushes I used for this. So I used the, let me see, what did I use? Yeah, this was the rough ink which I was just working on and just, you know, decreasing the scale again on the metal. I think it was a combination of this one and rough and brush, which is what I was using for a lot of the metal. So yeah, I love can... it. Rough and brush. <laughs> brush. I realized like when I modeled this, there was some pigeons, but I know realistically there wouldn't be any pigeons, but it's too cold for them. <laughs> They're like, no, we're not into yeah. this either. They're like, why am I here? Um, yeah, and then I added like drippy brush again on top. I find like, I like that look of like overhanging snow, kind of fluffy on the very tops. Let's see, what is next? So 
for the buildings, what piece is this? Oh, I see. I, oh, this is what I was working with with you guys. So that is done. Um, snow edging. There's so many layers and I'm just like, what is it? Snow edging. I think yeah, so it looks like you have your layers in there from uh, what you worked on yes, previously. Yes, I started, started then... working out because I'm like, I know me. I'm just going to start like, you know, going crazy with it. But I also want to show you guys all the different steps. So even like details like this, like I really appreciate, oh, yeah. you know, you got, you know, you're going to get a little bit of snow in between the joints. Maybe that's a little bit of like the architecture in me. You know, I'm going to appreciate when you guys add details like this and right, it would happen. I, I was actually crazy enough to even like add this detail right here. I'm sure like architects would know like joints, like for the brick, like when I initially modeled this, it was just straight across. I'm like, no, no, no. Like I'm going to yeah. the masking and I actually went in and added the grooves in. Wow. Yeah. I'm a little crazy. <laughs> That's awesome though. That's what makes like everything yeah. look really good in the final piece. Totally. Like I appreciate it. I'm sure like everyone, when you see the whole thing, it actually looks sort of realistic. Yeah. Um, I then wanted to sort of start creating and I can, this is like a later process too, but like add a little bit of like fog happening over here. So what I did was, I think I just used um, like a gradient. And mm -hmm. in this case, it was just white and it became transparent to sort of add, and I masked this out after, but sort of give this look of blizzardness. Like you wouldn't get such a sharp edge. Do you know what I'm using? So yeah, so just a simple gradient and then I just masked it out and I'll show you guys cool yeah I think in this case it's just pretty straightforward just because I wanted it on like the red brick um just change it to like a soft soft round brush and then just eliminate that whoa it takes so long <laughs> So uh, Rob says that summer sucks. He doesn't like the sweat, <laughs> bugs, and heat. <laughs> no. That's so funny. Rob, I think you might be the only one that's I saying know. that you don't Where like do you summer. <laughs> that is so funny. I don't think I would like see like the fact that like living in Canada and it's it gets quite cold. When it does get really hot, I don't complain. I know a lot of people like immediately start going like, Oh my God, it's so hot. I'm like sweating. It's too much. And I'm like, I'm not going to complain because I literally had like three months of like <laughs> cold, windy winter. Yeah. So hibernation. So yeah, I'm just going to turn this one on and show you guys. So that's sort of the effect I'm going for. Super subtle, but like mm. you can see it's, it's kind of creating a little bit of depth as well. Like the buildings are further back, have a little bit of a haze to it. And... I think I'm going to start introducing my husband and Heston in here. So Ooh. <laughs> this was really funny. Like, um, let me see what this original image. There's John. There's my husband. So I kind of posed him, of course, like the, the concept here is uh, he is pulling like Heston across with a sleigh, like on a winter Aww. day going home. So, um, of course, like winter is perfect. He had his jacket on and I'm like, OK, pose. And then uh, I will pop in Heston. This was him. Like, I mean, there's a lot of like layers in here, but this was our backyard. And oh, I actually have the mask. Okay, I'm going to show you guys my backyard. It's really messy, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to ask about if you uh, if you layer mask them out ahead of time. So yeah, that's yeah. Good see, to you see. see, like, there's our backyard. Oh. <laughs> and there's like John laughing at him, but. Um, yeah. And then he, I'm just like, okay, Heston, now put your hands up. And then he's just like, okay. And uh, yeah, so then you just- So to, cute. Yeah, mask him around. So I think like the fastest, like I just love um, this feature right here that we recently got, I think the object selection tool. I think that's the one like that literally like will wrap around yeah, like I, I used to like go around with like a pen tool and like start 
following all the edges and now it like automatically does it for you like i love that feature now in the new photoshop i don't think i can yeah. ever go back anymore such to a go game around changer pens, like, you know oh my god and it's like and the fact that like you know you can like refine it like up here selecting and masking and especially for like hair like i know like in this case i'm not using it but like when i have like a lot of my edits have like hair like blowing again because you're floating away and like uh, that hair detail is like such a big difference now from like what it used to be before um so yeah i'll just bring this one back apply layer mask and then i don't have to save it because he's already in here and i'll show you like um this is sort of the original outfit he had in terms of color and i love like with photoshop like you can just change any color to like you can literally change your outfit like i've done that enough times i don't know if you have too um, yeah you're wearing like red and i'm like you know what i'm feeling blue today <laughs> like yep. i don't have to even change my outfit like i can do everything with photoshop so I know. the way i did that is um i think i used well you could use hue and saturation um and then pick uh, a particular color like you can just like look at his hat like if you wanted to, you can just change it to any color, increase the saturation, and then obviously like mask out here, um, his like skin or coat and everything else. And then it, you know, work around that. In this case, because I wanted him to match black, I just wanted everything to just be black, more like a, a silhouette like John as well from a distance. I actually just um, added a, a new layer I had it clipped so that it would just follow his and it wouldn't like exceed like the hat with the outline when you clip it and then I just picked black I believe and then I just traced around it so I just colored his hat I'm looking at my okay so my flow I mean in this case I can go sharper I'm like, okay, let's make your hat black. Yeah. And it could be any color at this point. Like, I just wanted to stick to black. Same thing with his, like, boots. Although it's cute blue boots, I wanted black. <laughs> I'll just I love his little pose. It's so cute. <laughs> I know. He was listening. <laughs> you, know, you have no idea. Like, this is the age where he's just like, no. He immediately sees my <laughs> camera and he runs off. He's like, no, no. And I'm like, please, it's like starting to become like the bribing phase. I have a couple of friends with like kids that are a little bit older than him. He's a uh, two and a half now. They're like, yeah, uh, get ready for um, bribing. And I'm like, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> I use multiply. Yeah. So that's what I use. I use multiply. So then you get like the edging. Okay. Obviously, mm, yeah, we're messy here, but I'll show you guys. Um, so that's you that know, what's great. Black boots and black hat. Exactly. Easy. And then... Um, so I had a sled, boom, right here, that again, like the same process, uh, this was the original, and then I darkened it, because again, I, why is my, lots of sound happening, <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of pinging, and then, um, yeah, so then I darkened it out with curves, tell me not, why, why do you have to make sound? <laughs> I think it might be happening a lot now because it's just I must have clicked something funny and it's just off. But um, yeah, so then I used levels to darken it and then I used curves just because I wanted more of like that walnut look. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm worried that it's going to keep making sounds now every time I zoom in and out. Um, and then, right, and then I just use again like um, a new layer and then I just started to add in a little bit of shading. And then I multiplied it and John's footprints. All right. So then I just start adding footprints and like details like of it actually like getting scraped across the snow. I will show you guys. Uh, right. Okay. So I think originally in um, the SketchUp, I wonder why it's doing that. I'm curious because it's doing something. Can I just... Is it, is oh, it um, a noise in? Oh, you turned it off. Okay. It was weird. It was like somehow there was like a, it was holding on to something else in the background. Okay. I managed to just click it away and it's okay. So uh, yeah, I started to add another layer because I think initially I had this turned off. Like, yeah, you can see like this original file. I had 
really sharp edges and I wanted to add a layer. Ah, of yeah. So again, in this case, I used, which one did I use? Rough, I, I had them written down for you guys, rough dry brush. <laughs> so um, I'll just show you what that texture looks like. Um, I see it, what it's doing. I don't need this clipped. So rough dry brush, that's another brush again. Rough. Yeah, there's so many of these like super textured brushes. I yeah. love it. And again, I use the white. It's so cool. Like you think like, okay, it's like just like when you just click on it, like, but it has like a lot of texture to it. Super yeah. funky. Cool. And then um, again, in this case, I just went around like how would like snow pile up. In this case, I really wanted to make it look like it's like a big chunk. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course, um, I think, yeah, I masked around all the metal. And the way I did it for like such a, like, cause I know it gets complicated. I'm not gonna go in there one at a time and like erase um, the, uh, the metal frame. So what I ended up doing was like, I actually like went all the way down and I selected the object and then I did like a negative. Mm. Uh, reversal in the mask like right here I think you can see it see like right there like that's just like me selecting the overall elements of the building and then like erasing it so it's a lot of like negative work so I will yeah. show you guys. this is sort of the final edging that I did let's see and then cool. mm -hmm. and then right and then I added just rope honestly like this one I just like drew in myself because I'm like it's so zoomed out like I don't have to find like rope detail like a high quality I just literally like, drew in rope right yeah that looks like, perfect yeah it works for like this level of detail so I did grab some some form of rope somewhere like online and again you can find like so many images on like Adobe stock um in this case I think I use it for the sled but like uh yeah it's, there's so many options there it's amazing and then this brush. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think, oh my God, this brush must have been, see, this is the one brush I didn't label. I'm like, shoot. But it's like, again, like multiple textures of, uh, yeah, a lot of like splatter. Wow, that looks remember. really it's, real. Yeah, it, it's crazy. I think it's like a splatter. So then you can see like, there's like a lot of negative and like more snow like falling on top of it. Yeah. But um, initially... Let me see if I can try to recreate it now with you guys. Um, that would be awesome. Yes, I'm gonna like try to figure this one out. So first, let me see. The brush would be sort of like a gray tone because it's kind of like imprinting like the sled. I don't think it's this one, but let me see. It could, it could actually work. Um, like I'm that's this, yeah that's the same one you're using uh to create yeah, the pile the, yes this okay. is under what is this one dry brush rough dry brush under the legacy brushes yeah so then um so what i initially did was i could go a bit dark and um, let me see if multiply works yeah okay just to show you guys so just creating a line. And I remember like I had to do this like a couple of times just because realistically I'm like, it's supposed to be equal, right? Like it's not like the sled is gonna be wonky. You're supposed to create that wonkiness with it. Um, but yeah, and then I created like a mask and I remember, I believe, let me try looking up like a splatter unless like anyone else in chat knows any cool splatter. Yeah, if you guys know any good splatter brushes, let us know. Also, I see um, Lessa said, so this is where I failed with my composite. Would you mask the person first and then edit the photo? This was a little little while back um, when you were showing the picture of your son and your husband. Okay, what was the question? Like um, so, so she said, would you mask the person first and then edit the photo? Yeah, okay. I so what would you, what do you do usually like in your case? 
I was going to say, I think you could do it either way. Like in your mm-hmm. case, you um, masked them first and then mm-hmm. had them on separate in their own canvas and then mm-hmm. put them into your, your piece of art. And I think, I think it's a personal preference when you say yep. so. I've, I've, I usually tend to bring an image in. So like, for example, like John over here, like if it was just him with the entire image with the background, I actually find bring him in first and then, um, converting it to a smart object Mm -hmm. and then do the masking because sometimes I actually forget and what I tend to do is like when you open up the file and then I start like uh, I think masking and then moving it over and then converting to smart object and I realize the issue with that is when I want to edit him it jumps onto a separate like layer I don't know if that's ever happened to you you know what I mean and I'm like shoot no I want to edit it on like this page rather than having it go to another layer and on its own. So then I'm like guessing at that point. So I find the best method is bringing the person in or the object in, converting first and then adding the masking, not the other way, even though you can do it whichever way is comfortable for you. I just find when I reversed it, it opens it up in a separate like box. And then I'm like, shoot, like I can't see the whole image and then edit. So, right. Yeah. That's a good I, question. Yeah. I and totally that agree with you on that. Cause I, I remember I did that a lot and then I saw other artists do it a certain way. And every time they did it, I'm like, Oh, that's more efficient. So that's the way I, I tend to do it all the time now. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely do the same thing. Like I'll put the object into the picture and then mm-hmm. convert it to a smart object. If I remember. Yes, and- exactly. exactly. <laughs> And then, um, and then mask it. And a lot of times I'll like lower the opacity on the full layer to kind of see um, where I want to place it before I actually mask it and everything too, just to kind of like move it around. Absolutely. In this case, like, yeah, I I definitely wanted the, the composition of like John and has to sort of centered at the bottom. So your eye goes down and you see like, Oh, like, you know what, in a snowy day, these guys just had a lot of fun and then they're heading home. So, um, Let's see, what else am I? Okay, so then shadows. Let's add some shadow. I've already sort of started that. And that's just um, grabbing John. Let me, and Hessen. Okay, so let me show you guys how I do it in case um, anybody is curious how to do it. Honestly, I find like I tend to eyeball my shadows a lot and I shouldn't, but it's just a bad habit. I just guess, I don't know. I'm sure there's like a better way of doing it. But um, yeah, so I just duplicate and with the control button, I literally eyeball and it's so bad. And that's why maybe like in my model, like um, I think uh, looking at the shadows, like if you guys have already existing shadows in the images, it's good to kind of use them as reference. So in this case, you can see it's like a sharp angle down. Um, Because I had snow on top, I'm going to pull him out, which I ended up doing up here. Uh, where are they? So many layers. <laughs> I, I know, right? There's so many layers. I'm just going to drop it up here just to show you guys. Yeah. And so just use the control button and hold the control down and just kind of eyeball. But I always find, and I, I do this a lot with architecture too, because we do add a lot of people in our renderings and it's always nice if you do have um, people modeled into your space before you render. But again, like I said, a lot of the times I like to post produce like in Photoshop and I, and I find it actually faster, like for the quick sketchy versions. But if you notice like this, I wish I could find a better way to do it where if you notice like his left leg is in the front and his no, his left is in the back and his right is in the front. But then when you mirror and do this technique, if you see like there's always that leg that's further back and i'm like oh like i'm gonna have to now stretch it out but you know you can fake it it's a shadow but yeah it's just always funny i always notice i'm like i wish there was a way to like pull that leg down and i think in this case i'll just pretend and use puppet warp yeah i was just gonna say you could try doing puppet warp or um even kind of like painting it in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because in the end, like you end up like multiplying it and that's, and just darken it. But sorry, John. (laughs) (laughs) Stretching out the leg. Sorry. 
but that's you right there. But um, yeah, so this is also, I love using Puppet Warp. I'm not using it a lot in this case, but when I do a lot of uh, compositing with like uh, my other work, it's like my best friend. I literally yeah. use Puppet Warp for everything. Okay, I already have a better version of this, but like you get the idea. And then from yeah. here, um, I then use solid color and for now just pick anything and then just have it clipped. And then I end up picking up a shadow that's already existing. In this case, I was kind of using like this dark shadow. Yeah. And then I would just mask obviously like the, um, the leg. And I also use like a little bit of a gradient just because like um, he's taller, right? So as he's going, as he's higher, you want to consider like the shadows further away. So um, I guess first thing I'll do. Is anyone, how's everyone doing? On They're the a little quiet over there right now, but if you guys have any questions yeah. for Farah, then definitely send them over. Yeah, let me know. We're working on some shadows in our snowy, snowy scene right now. And then just using um, the gradient tool. And then of course, uh, to sort of smooth out the edges because it's so super sharp, you can always, and I think, yeah, because it's already a smart object, you can kind of keep going back and editing. It will not be destructive in this case. I think, oh, I'm on the actual mask. I have to do it here. Um, yeah. It's starting yeah. to look really good, like especially in the little thumbnail view that I have, like as you mm. zoom out, it's starting to really mm. kind of have some depth to it. Totally. It's going to like, it's slowly starting to become, so there's like a story finally happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to turn on the original one I have just to match already what I had thought of before. So, so there's... And yeah, like I even added like the details of like the string. Oh like, yeah. Thing, right. Like, <clears throat> and then I did that for Heston as well. Um, and then, yeah, that's the original. Like if you were to just to drag his image, but using the solid color and clipping it on, you get like a realistic, at least looking shadow. And then you can again, go back with like the snow brushes and then like even mask it out. And that way it looks like, you know, there's like, highlights of snow piled on top of that shadow so it doesn't look so flat right right and then what else did i do guys okay so fairy has a question for you um yes. do, do you have any tips on how you use perspective properly when you're doing your compositing <clears throat> so like in this case this is not real because this is like a, a 3d model first of all and second of all i purposely made it two-dimensional like if you notice it like it's very illustrative like it's super flat but like if I was to render it obviously I would try to consider perspective and um when I'm compositing like yeah for sure I think like perspective is quite important and then you have to consider all the shadows and highlights with the perspective where the light is coming from so uh, yeah um how would I use perspective properly I don't know exactly like what is proper? You that's true. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I mean, tell me more specifically what he means. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's always what it comes down to, too. What is proper when what we're speaking proper? in art terms? But I think <laughs> I would say kind of paying attention to like your angles and your lines, which you've done here clearly, and then mm -hmm. um, where the light is coming from, and then also possibly turning on a perspective grid that Photoshop offers if you really wanted to pay attention to oh, yeah. where your horizon line is and where your drop off fall off points are. And that kind of would help give the proper perspective sure. that's so true yeah i am going to show you guys i think all oh, right so let me show you how what i meant by like the shadows because i think right now it's turned off but um for example what i ended up doing i'm going to show you guys this image for all you modelers out there so see this is oh cool the sketchup image because i realized that when i started to add all the snow that you know when we were talking earlier that it just started to become really flat like if you guys are able to do this like again because I'm not doing my own compositing, usually I actually sit and like take my time with shadows and using the multiply blend and add shadow over time. Um, in this case, because it was just like already a model that I created in the past, um, 
I just took out all the materials out and then sort of uh, kept the shadows. And that's the image I superimposed like right here, you can see. Let me have this uh, disabled first. So if I was to turn it on, aha, it's because I have all this stuff turned on first. And let me turn the original image. So that's, mm -hmm. um, imagine sort of like the black and white and uh, using the multiply. I think I um, purposely, because there's a little tint of like peach or like there's like a warm tint to it. That's why I had started to brighten it up with uh, levels so that the white would disappear and then the, the dark sort of shadow would show through. And yeah, I neutralized with the hue saturation and took out all the color tone that you saw like originally in the image. It was a bit peachy. And then I um, pretty much put it to multiply. So then you can see that layer of shadow now on top of all the edits of the snow like that I did. And then when I turn back on the layer mask, oh, not apply, let's enable. Um, I actually started to like, you can see here, I start to erase majority of um, the areas that didn't need additional shadowing. For example, this already had shadow, so I took it out. It's just to help sort of keep, you know, where the railings were, like before there was like snow on top of it, so you couldn't see the shadow from the railing. So that's just um, what I did here. So you can see, you know, realistically, there would be a bit of shadow here before when I had this turned off. It just looked really flat. So yeah, yeah, yeah th that makes a huge difference. Yeah, exactly. So now it's brought back a little bit more of the depth that you know there was questions about that before. So mm -hmm. uh, with snow, yeah, it totally gets super flat. So you can even see like the roof here. Oh like, yeah, you know, like before that was gone. I'll show you guys again. And um, if you didn't have like a three D model or access to something like this, I think like what I would have done if this was just. Um, and any image like from like an Adobe stock uh, page, you would just have like a new layer and then add multiply and then just have like a shade closest to like the shadow and then just start like kind of overlaying. Like that's what I do. I take my sweet time and then just at a really low opacity like level. And then so that you get that similar look that uh, in this case I was able to do really quickly. Um, Okay, so I'm going to start, uh, let me see if I finished all the other layers before I jump into the foreground snow, like, and this is where it starts to get super fun. Okay, so there's one more brush, ink box, chopped. I'm going to show you what, this one was, uh, again, me getting very um, detailed. So uh, I was thinking, I'm like, you know what, like, if it's super windy and, um, you know, snow is, like, hitting up against the brick, I actually, like, looked on reference, like, you know, snow on brick wall like i mean ah, I like yeah um if you want uh something realistic like i would totally suggest like look at references in real life like what's happening in like actual scenes and so um it wouldn't be so flat so let's look for ink box chopped it's such a good tip to look at references of real life images and to kind of yes. see how it would look. There's like uh, no point in trying to guess. Like, no, yeah. If you want to, you could if you want to, you know. <laughs> um, we got a question for you while you look for that brush. Um, so, where do you find your inspiration? Jessica is asking, do you mm. look from people, books, websites, podcasts? Yeah, great uh, question. A lot of my uh, inspiration comes from. Pinterest I feel like I hide in there like I'm sure you do too like there's like insane amount of creative ideas there I'm like amazed because like before I used to try to kind of come up with ideas myself and I still do that like I'm not like um but I find like your mind opens up even more when you're looking at like um other creatives like you um there's also like a couple of um artists like on Instagram that I discovered like you're one of them too like your your lighting and like techniques like that's going to be tomorrow by the way like I learned a lot of stuff from you we will share that like tomorrow oh <laughs> it's crazy the story I'll, I'll share that tomorrow you guys tune in tomorrow it's so funny but um yeah there's like uh, a couple of artists like on Instagram that I follow that give me a lot of inspiration but I find um a lot of it comes from Pinterest and it's especially like uh, illustrative artists. Like when I do like my composites, yeah. I find like the the ones that are really like taking it a step further 
are the ones that are actually like free handing, which I can't personally do, but it's like, it's like another worldly, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's super cool. I highly recommend checking Pinterest. Um, even like uh, looking on like specific like hashtags, like on Instagram, like if you're looking for a certain style, um, I, I tend to do that a lot too. So this yeah. is me like, you know, literally sitting and I'm just like, you know, I've got nothing better to do. If you guys want to meditate, same thing, like coloring. You know, a lot of people <laughs> love to color and stuff. So like coloring books, like this is me, like this is me just like no thought whatsoever. And I love like adding this detail. So this brush was, um, um, again, this one's Kyle's um, Inkbox Chopped. So again, cool. this is like perfect for like, gr like, you know, during like joints, like brick. I found this to be perfect to kind of just enough and I'm, I'm barely putting any pressure on this and it's giving this sort of rough tone, like what, um, how snow would kind of gather. Yeah. And, um, I think I specifically, like, I would just kind of, I mean, I could go all over if you really want it to be snowy, but in my case, like I was adding it just up the area, assuming that there's like wind coming right here. So it would like hit across the wall. So again, like um, looking at references, like was totally helpful. And I know like you can obviously clump up more like, like, so if you feel like you want it to be super wintry, but in, in this case, I was just like, oh, you know what? I'll just, just ever so between edging. So it didn't feel so sharp and harsh in this particular edit that I was going for. So. That looks so cool. Yeah, and then when you start to zoom out after, you'd be like, okay, like this is yeah. looking wow, right? Like it's looking quite real, and I'm like, oh, I'm I'm impressing myself. <laughs> I know, I love that. I love that little detail that the second you zoom out, it's like, oh my god. Yes, exactly. It's all worth it after. Totally, it's looking all frosty. Yes, exactly. Love it. This is like a bunch of these, like, yeah, like you can just pretty much winterize anything after using a couple of these brushes and then just, just chilling and, you know, put some music on and then just brush away. Like I find like yeah. I'm putting very little effort. It's just, I'm enjoying just adding snow. Yeah. If you really want that winter look for your edits the little painting technique it's definitely relaxing I totally agree I'm always yeah. like willing to put more time into either painting or like layer masking something by hand because it just yeah. feels so soothing to like exactly. sit there and just aren't there like times where you wait for all like the heavy duty like stuff get all that out of the way and then you're like okay it's highlighting and shadow time yes and oh my <laughs> god <laughs> that's the best part you get clean up everything like get rid of all the masking and you're like Oh my God. Like, you know, and then you're just like, Oh, my favorite part. Like, how do you like get the light in and out and totally. Yep. Yeah. I, I completely agree. And I kind of grew up like painting and stuff. And just recently I've gotten more into like digital painting on that's my so cool. iPad. And that's my favorite part doing the highlights and the shadows. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, get everything done. I'll paint this in. That looks good. <laughs> good enough. Okay. Now I good can enough. just sit oh, here and like, Exactly. Ah. <laughs> there's no thought to it but so much is happening and yep. then you zoom out and you're like yes like it it completely changes like the look yeah I find like a lot of like I think that's like the question I get a lot um is like I guess the two ma major questions I get is how do you blend like objects together like so it looks like they're like one cohesive piece and I think I will sort of tackle that more tomorrow because it's gonna show like a couple of different like images coming into one um and then the second one is just like how do you get it to like blend so well and a lot of it is just the patience of adding correct highlights and low lights and shadows like you were saying it's so important to like look at where the light source is and not have shadows in different direction because then you just unless you're going for that look again like nothing is wrong here you know but like right. if you're going for like that really realistic like look um yeah, it's good to pay attention to those little details because it makes a big difference. Yeah. Okay, I so agree. I'm going to show you guys the final look of that. Bam. Yes. Ooh. So this was, yeah, so I kind of went crazy on this and I'm just like, okay, where would it go? And then, yeah, like up close, it still looks a little like sharp. You're like, what are you, what are you doing? But then, of course, like when you start to zoom out, it just... Wow. Right? 
It looks can you really just good. toggle that on and off as you're zoomed out so we can kind of see the before and after? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. So like, you know, yeah. looks, you're starting to add depth, like every layer from like the different levels of texture and snow that's coming on here. That's awesome. That makes such a huge difference. Yes. And then almost, this is like almost getting there. I'm like, okay, uh, this yeah. is cool. And I feel like it needs a couple more things to really like finish this off. How are we with time? Okay, cool. Yeah, we're doing good. Awesome. Um, and what do you guys think in the chat? Are you digging this yeah. snow on the wall? I feel like it makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Uh, and another question for you from Matt. Um, when you are rendering your model, do you already have a hero image in mind or do you render multiple and then choose later on in Photoshop? I, I do a lot of go with the flow kind of like editing style. Cause I feel like there's always like an idea in my mind that I want, but it never ends up that way. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, majority of my edits, I think like I sort of start off with an inspiration, but it, again, like, especially if you're working with a baby, a toddler, you're never going to get him to like pose the way you want him to. So it's almost like he ends up creating what I'm going to end up having my background be. But like, if it's something with myself, um, I can control that. And I mean, this particular edit is definitely heavier on the modeling, but majority of my edits don't, I don't really use a SketchUp or like um, that often. Like I will actually like uh, find images that work around my final. And again, I never know exactly what my final is going to be. Eventually I just have to tell myself like, you know what? I think it's good. You know, <laughs> like I like it. I, I could keep going forever, but you know what? So again, like for example, like the snow on the brick, like I could have just kept going, but eventually just like, no one's going to really see that detail, but you appreciate just enough. You're like, okay, you know, there's a little bit of thought here and yeah. So it varies like from image to image. I think right. if I was to uh, be very heavy on like architecture and buildings, like I would probably have an idea in place and then yeah I, I don't tend to linger a lot with my ideas I think I'm like yep it works I think this is great I can work with it and then I start layering it up so but it's that definitely fun. makes sense for sure yeah yeah okay I'm gonna so show people you. are loving this everyone yeah. says it looks really good and that uh the snow definitely takes it to the next level so I'm gonna show you guys another um Kyle's brush that I'm like obsessed over it. It's literally, so now I'm going to start um, adding snow to the foreground because I feel like that's what's going to finish this off. Um, so if you guys look for, I think it's under, let me see. Because I have a couple of my own personal snow brushes that I've created or I've like gotten online, but like this one, I think you should have snow. Let's just write real. Oh, hold on. Sing Snowflake. Not this one. Um, no, don't tell me. It's not <laughs> on the computer. I uh, might have to like, down. you know what? Give me a, <laughs> this is so funny because there is a particular brush that I had saved, I believe, in my tablet and I didn't get a chance to like drop it in here mm. but, but I mean that's the same thing like if you guys ever create your own brushes like that's the perfect way free snow photoshop is this the one I'm gonna have to make it back no I feel like yeah go I'll ahead and show, take I'll show you guys what this uh, what this brush does but I feel like um you guys can find this right here and it's called it's Kyle's Snowflake Real One. I have a feeling, let me drop, I'm gonna just guess if it's in here. Let me just move that over. Cool. Oh no. Okay, so then let me try to import. Now you guys can figure out <laughs> how you can <laughs> put your own brushes if you need your own brushes. Uh, hey, it's a good tip. Yes. And I always, ex let's see, did I, I think to get, I think you have to import somewhere around here. Cool. Import brushes. Okay. So let me see my desktop. I'm going to see if this is the one. 
For any of you guys just joining us, if you're popping in halfway through, we're creating a snowy scene. And right now, Farah is looking for a brush. So if anyone wants to chat in the chat, come say hello. And don't forget that you can re-watch this on Adobe Live. You can watch the replay. Um, they are on YouTube and Behance for any of you that want to catch what happened in the beginning or watch past uh, Adobe Live streams. They're always there for you your use. Absolutely. Guys. Oh my God. That's so funny. Okay. Well, I don't have that brush, but I'm going to show you guys what it's doing. It's one of Kyle's brushes. If you zoom in, like he's figured out a way to literally have snowflakes. Like I'm literally <laughs> clicking and I brush it across and it's like sprinkling snow like realistic snow like it's almost to the point where i'm just like it's like coming at my you know like the it's in your yeah. head the detail like i you guys have to like absolutely look for this one if i find it i'm gonna link it to you guys but um yeah you can see like and it's almost like assorted and it's like real snowflakes so when i wish i could have shown you guys like when i like make the stroke it's like magically falling onto the screen and i'm like oh my god i it looks so I, pretty it's so cool and so um I added that one and then, uh, yeah. And so this one is one of my own brushes that I I didn't create it myself, but you can absolutely look online and find so many like awesome like brushes for like different things. So in this case, like it's just a snow brush and I will, it, it looks kind of like this, like you see right here. So um, I think I just type in snow. And let's just, we'll just test these out for fun. But like, yeah, you can see. Oh yeah. I don't have to do any work and it looks so real. Like, you know, and so I'm just like, oh my God, like that's where I start to go like really crazy. At this point, I'm just like, I'm just gonna go nuts on adding snow. So, and again, like you can change the scale. And I believe you can create your own snow. Like if you look online, it's like a vector of like black and white. And I think you can just, go to screen, I believe in blend mode. Mm -hmm. And if it's black, it'll like remove the negative black and then keep the white. So, and then um, again, there's a lot of like tutorials online on how to create your own brushes. Like that's how I did a few, like just look on YouTube. Like there's so many tutorials for literally anything and everything. Um, let me just see what else brushes, but I feel like this is what like really finishes off. I think this was the brush I used for the foreground. Yeah, you see right here and then you can just keep adding. Oh, I love that. I love it how it's like up close. Yes. So it feels like, you know, you're you're actually someone in the building, like across yeah. when you're taking the picture, right? Like yes. up against the window. Exactly. And, and of course, like when you get like funny stuff like this, you can just mask that out. Uh, just use a soft brush tool or anything like that. And then let me click out. Woo. Yeah and then just kind of combine it so it looks like it's one giant. But yeah, I love I love like brushes like this. I don't know. It's just, like takes away, it just makes life so much easier. It's like where totally. were you last time, you know? And like, again, like, you know, Anna, like when you're going places, let's just say you found like this really gorgeous winter scene, like you're taking a photo of, but you're like, I would love it if it was snowing right now. Like you yep. can just literally add this and it just adds that magic. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to download this snow brush because usually yeah. I look for an overlay and then yeah. do what you were saying with like screening yeah. it out. Um, but I really like having the brush because sometimes when I look for the overlays, it's Absolutely. not quite right. And also like the fact that the resolution is only a certain fixture of it, whereas like the brush, you can zoom in and out and like make them like increase, like you can increase the size of the snow. So it's like, up close or like, you know, shrink it down. So um, yeah, it's further away. And um, in this case, like, you know, I was like fortunate enough to like find this brush which shows movement. So I don't have to like really add anything more to it, but um, you can always like, you know, add a little bit of like a motion blur, like to make it look like it's slightly angled. Um, that's like ways of how I've, I think, even created like rain in the past. Like you can make a bunch of dots and then just add oh, a yeah, yeah. blur, right? And then it's like raining. So that's, that's like perfect. A, another cool idea to do. So I think yeah. in this case, Hi, Jesus. Nice to see you. Jesus Ramirez is here. Hey, oh my He's joined God. Joined in. He's 
Photoshop king. <laughs> I'm like honored for him to be here. Like it's amazing. I know. It's he awesome. can tell us a lot of things. Yeah, he said <laughs> excellent work. So he oh, loves what you're doing. <laughs> That's amazing. So here I'll show you guys another. So I think in this case, like I wanted um this side to have like sort of like this softer kind of snow falling. And I'm just like because of the wind and the concept of having like this sort of blizzard the kind of effect. I went for like uh, a snow that's a lot sharper. Oh, there's rain. But um, yeah, like this one right here, like a little bit more compact. And uh, so again, like go crazy. I feel like this is where I was like really, really completes the look. Here, let, let me start from the- I love that. Yeah. It's like, oh, it makes it feel so snowy as if you're there. Exactly. Although we don't want to be there. <laughs> Like this is what you do. And then um, you just appreciate it from afar. <laughs> again, Nick, you can like go crazy. I'm like, John, you're in a blizzard. Like this is like <laughs> myself, you know, I'm just like, oh my God. Um, but yeah. And then like, again, if this is like too heavy, just use like a masking tool and just hide that off. Let's see a soft brush. I just love like how there's just so many brushes that like a lot of people probably don't know like that we have and you can just experiment. And I'm sure like the intent of a lot of these brushes were for something completely different. Like you can just like completely draw, but like in this case, it's just like adding winter snow, like which I would yeah. have never thought to use. So, okay, let me just love it. turn this one on. There you go. That was kind of the look. And then which one is this one? Right. That was another layer. I think this one I was just showing you guys. Yeah. So I think like that is pretty much like, you know, where I wanted this to go. And if you guys have any suggestions, you know, like, I mean, this was sort of like, I think the final look to where I wanted this drawing to be. If you guys have any ideas or if you want me to go like, drop anything i don't know yeah. i mean technically a bird wouldn't be here like you know you realistically right. you always add like a cool bird in the sky and like mm, i feel like this is just like a nice still like yeah. image and this is where i looked at you know you look at from far you zoom out and you're just like okay you know what like i really think this is kind of where i want it to be so yeah, the end, really good. i'll show you guys like sort of how i like to finish my work so after when I have like all the layers like figured out and set, I do, um, I flatten it out, but like in a new layer, I forget the short, I think the shortcut is um, control alt shift E yep. and that will, yeah, see, I have it already like sort of saved in my Wacom tablet, which is super efficient. And uh, for like getting ready for like Instagram and such, like I tend to do like a save as and I think, yeah, I do a save as, and then just like remove all the layers below. Because at this point I'm like, I know this is sort of like the effect I am going for. So I don't think I'm gonna like revert back and change anything. So once you know you're happy with it, just do a save as, or like just delete all the layers below so that the file isn't so big. Cause I find like a lot of people tend to ask me like, oh, like how do you help like, you know, uh, cut back on the resolution? Like, you know how sometimes there's like, a, there's like a dullness i'm not sure if there's a way like you figured out like on instagram like how to like increase the sharpness right but, like i've found that uh when you like right click and then convert it to a smart object once you've like removed everything um and then i export it so before i even export i'm just going to show you guys what i do and that is like the way i like to finish my edits like whenever i'm completely done I go to filter and then I go to um, gallery, yeah, blur gallery and I go to field blur. And I've sort of shared this again, like in my previous video. And in this case, like, I don't think it's really that necessary because there's already so much snow and texture going on that you don't need it and you might not even notice it. But I like to add, uh, when I do a lot of compositing, and have like multiple like photos from like different places like sometimes mm -hmm. the resolution isn't always the same and so um in order to kind of get that final look of like this one flat 
cohesive like image like it was always meant to be that I come here and then I reduce the blur to literally like one percent because I'm actually like looking more <clears throat> for the noise I'll show you let me see if there's a oh, that's not what I want <laughs> oh, yeah the sound is back okay anyways um <laughs> then I'm like so I increase the grain to roughly like it varies but like 18 to 25 percent okay it's gonna make a little bit of sound you guys ignore it oh okay oh, there it is there it there we go but, um, you can kind of see it i'm not sure but like it gives like this sort of grainy look i think for tomorrow's edit i'll i'll do it again so i can show you guys better but it has like this noise sort of like grain look to the entire image so that um it feels like it's like a cohesive like image so that's yeah. like, I, like my little signature i guess i like to do and then um yeah, so then I do a save as, and I can take you guys if you want to um, a Lightroom Mobile and then show you how I sort of finish it off. Yeah. Because even though, like, I, I know a lot of artists, what they like to do is um, they like to um, do a lot of, like, camera raw or, like, have, like, a signature look change up here first. And then they just kind of like take it to Instagram or wherever they're posting. I actually like to finish my images in Lightroom Mobile. So um, that's where I kind of have already presets ready um, cool. that I tend to fix on. And then, yeah, so let me like show you guys. So maybe before you switch to that, just a quick uh, question from the yes. audience. Yeah. They were asking about um, the white space in the background. Would you ever consider like putting something back there or you as the artist, do you uh, kind of like that white space there? And do you feel like that's final? I think and that's finished? a really cool question. Cause it's like in this case, like I, I think there's a little bit of negative space is always like really, really good to have. Like you don't want something to be so busy. Your eye can't focus on things. Like in this case, I think because like architecturally you've got like these large masses, like your eye actually looks to the center first. And like, for me, at least I'm actually like noticing, like I look up and down and then I look at John and Heston. So there's like a story. It's like guiding you. Yeah. Like having this negative space actually makes you look at like, okay, where are they? Okay, there's buildings, tall buildings on the side. And then eventually it makes you like, it focuses you, you know what I mean? Like, so totally. in this, I feel like I like it. Like, you know how we were thinking like, oh, like, you know, if there was like a random bird or something, like it wouldn't make so much sense. But in this case, it, it's, I think the only thing I could have, and I thought about it is maybe even if I really wanted to, add like a building that's super 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 like almost like five or ten percent opacity like so that you mm. can tell like there's more depth happening there's more buildings in the back but in this case it's like I feel like it's so blizzard like and it's a little bit abstract and yeah it's more illustrative I find like this particular edit that I kind of like that yeah and it pulls out um the balconies here you know yeah. what I mean so it's kind of like bringing different depths to the space so totally it's a, cool, it's, it's a good question though for sure I thought about it at some point yeah it's kind of cool because it's like they're coming from this Narnia world that they were just playing in and now Absolutely. coming back into the city and you're not really yeah. sure what's behind the blizzard wall you know That's so, and yeah. you can leave it to your imagination to be like are that. they coming from the woods the mountains like where were they playing exactly. I like it it definitely tells that. a such story. a great exactly Put, yeah. put, put in their imagination. Okay, yeah. so let me quickly switch. Yes. In the meantime, and uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm gonna go to the mobile now. Perfect. Yeah. So, to, just to recap switch. for everyone, um, Farah is switching over to mobile to do some Lightroom editing in her final tweaking before Instagram. Yes. This is cool. Yeah, I've never actually done this process of going from Photoshop on my desktop into Lightroom Mobile to finalize it. Have I you usually... tried that? Like, have no. you ever? It's, it's, I mean, it's very similar to using Lightroom, but I find that a lot of people um, tend to, like, if you're not super, like, comfortable with, uh, with, like, Lightroom Mobile, like, I, I think I initially, like, downloaded, so you can see this is the screen, like, I have a lot of, like, other images, I tend to, like, yeah. look at a few and save them so that um, I can see, like, the cohesion to it, but, totally. Um, 
I think before Lightroom, like I had downloaded Lightroom Mobile. And so that's where I started playing with Lightroom like effects. So you can see this is like the, the image. Sorry guys. <laughs> and then, um, so uh, this is the image that you guys uh, were looking at before. And I think I'm gonna go like talk about more about um, the, what's it called? Like all the setups I do tomorrow, but I can show you guys sort of like presets. So I find like, um, I like to have a preset that I have for Instagram. Like for example, it's super subtle now, but this is the one I tend to use. And I, again, you can find so many like tutorials on um, what the different uh, presets you can set. Like there's like super, like if you want something like super foresty and such, like there's like heavy on the green tones, or if you like the cool tones, like these are already like people have online. Um, so this is mine that like over time I've sort of like, like to use like on Instagram. So you can see it's like super subtle, but like, um, again, that's like going through all like the different exposures. I think it's like very similar to Lightroom. It's just that it's on your phone. Yeah. And again, if you feel like you do a lot of edits and then you want like a quick sort of change, but make cohesions like to your like Instagram feed or wherever, like social media platform, like I find mobile is like a good alternative. Like if you don't have like a desktop, like Lightroom, like this is like a great thing to have. So yeah, so this is, yeah. I'll like break down all of these like tomorrow, like for the one that I'm going to be doing, it's actually going to be fun. Uh, but this is sort of what I do. And then I end up um, saving it back to, I'll save it back and jump back to my desktop now. So I can show you guys better on screen, like what the before and after is. Awesome. That's so great. do you go then from your phone back into your computer? Sometimes I do. Like, you know what? It's funny. Like, I think in this case, just because I'm showing you guys, I'm bringing it back on the desktop. But uh, I think usually like once I like stop here, like this is where I tend to just upload right away from my phone to like Instagram or like Pinterest and such. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So let me jump back. Yeah, it's funny. I found I find that I use Lightroom Mobile for like our travel photos when I want to do the final tweak, um, but I never actually use it for like my Photoshop art. I use Lightroom on desktop, um, and then I kind of like finalize my picture in Photoshop and then bring it over to my phone. But um, but yeah, it's it's cool to see it like with the artwork using it in this method. Yeah, yeah, you can totally. Oh, what's that? That's my website. One second. Okay, so I'm back here. I'm going to show you guys uh all the changes basically from like the beginning so let me share my so this is like before like we first started this is sort of like you know where we started today and um let me show you so this is wow completion right it's crazy it's like from this you can wow and then this is the Lightroom. So you see, like, I've sort of, like, finished it off. You can see, like, the whites. I've kind of, like, toned it down. It's a bit cooler. And even, like, the brick texture. Like, I find, like, sometimes I'm not thinking about all the colors while I'm editing on Photoshop on my, like, computer or on my tablet. But then the presets help me sort of, I guess, um, what, what's that word like kind of focus on the colors that I do like when I put it on Instagram so yeah you can already see like there's like a bit of vibrancy in uh, the brick and yeah. even like the tones here like it's a bit yeah. flat but then like it just kind of finishes out like that's just the way I like it so yeah you can see like all the details yeah, it's, yeah. it was like a super fun way to winterize you know everything so and then after that like I would take it to um instagram yeah it looks so good i i really love kind of like the aqua tones that are starting to come out here and like on the shutters yeah, it, and the so door true. and then even on this uh close building it's true because i think if you look at the original um it it wasn't picking it up on so much here and even i believe yeah and i think once i put in lightroom it pops that aqua Cause I think that's what I had the preset as like, I think anything that I have, like, it's almost like a formula. So it's like, oh, if you're a certain blue, 
I want it to be a bit more on the green tint. And then you can save that preset. And then anytime you have a certain blue that's not like the blue you want to show, it'll automatically sort of correct it. So I can like show more on that tomorrow. But yeah, yeah, this is sort of the final look. And yeah. I think you can apply any of these brushes to like any edit and instantly turn it into like this winter wonderland. And it doesn't only have it. to be um, buildings. It could be like we were talking about like animals or literally anything, like even on your hand, like you can add like little details of snow and yeah, go fun with that stuff. Yeah. And uh, let me show you guys just one more example that I did in the past. I don't know if I showed you, I think I did earlier on, but like this was another like example. This is like another edit I did in the past where um, this is just like a summer day, right? And it's just like, you wouldn't think like, how could you make this winterized? So, and I have like a YouTube uh, speed edit and you can see it on my Instagram, but this is the final look. Like boom again the same. oh my god isn't that crazy it's a, it's the same brushes and I obviously like I went a little more surreal with this one and uh added like skiers and stuff I could have put you oh. in there Anna like you know I know <laughs> I know I'd be like hey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I um, love this photo this is so cool I might have to uh take some yeah. inspiration from this yes. and something because I I just love the way the ski lift is like over the building exactly That's so cool isn't that crazy? Like you wouldn't think like even like the foreground snow and then it's literally using the same brushes that yeah. like I was working on with you guys today. And it's like, you can do anything with this really. So you is this, um, are these buildings ones that you rendered or is this no, a photo? No, no. So this is just a photo. So oh, this, cool. Yeah, this is just, no. Cause like today I did like um, a rendering just because it wasn't about compositing like layering but this case like, this is what I tend to do a lot like where you just take images and you patch them together and you create like this completely new world so this is all photoshop what you see here so yeah like wow. that's what we were saying like it could be anything and is so. each little skier there did you get them from like a different picture and like the ski lift yes. or kind of I patched them all together and oh it's so cool it's so fun and like this back here it's um I think you can even like google um like I guess skiers aerial so you kind of get them at a certain angle which is like perfect for kind of superimposing them yeah. from afar and it gives you the shadow and everything so I mean there's so many ways so you don't have to individually one at a right. time you know it's like so the ones cool it, it yeah. has like a very like painter vibe it, like yes exactly. I love this yeah I think you will get inspiration with this one so I know I'm like I'm like hmm okay I think I it's might fun, do some right? work for the I, afternoon I exactly and I think like this one in particular like I was just going with the flow because I think initially I just started to like okay let's just add snow on the roof and I'm like what if this is just a ski hill like it's so fun and you've got like ski lifts and and then it just went crazy and just yeah so yeah, creative so which was anything yeah, yeah. Um, a quick question for you. Let's see where to go. Um, so Lessa says, um, when you, do you save your, do you save your photos on your mobile to the CC cloud? How did you, so you were in Lightroom on your phone and then it's back on your computer. What's your I wish I was that it? tech savvy. I know there are <laughs> ways where, um, yeah, you could, I think just save on the cloud and you should be able to multiply, you should be able to open it anywhere. I do know this because Paul Tranny does this a lot. And if you look at his stuff, like on um, Behance, like he, he is able to like, I watch him and like, he's just able to like jump from different software and have all yeah. the images. In my case, like I, what I tend to do is like I export, I like take it to like my email or, you know, Gmail account drive. And then I have that connected to my phone. And so I have that, um, yeah, I work on my phone and then again, I transfer it over just to show okay. you guys. But usually I end up just like saving it on my phone and then just uploading it directly. Cool. Yeah, yeah I've been trying to get into um, using the CC Cloud. libraries too yeah. and like get more used to that process. Totally. I should too. I agree. So if you guys have like any more questions, let me know. And hopefully this like kind of inspired you guys to do more like winter theme I can show you guys a couple of other projects that um on Behance that I have yeah that would be uh, great that was yeah, really like cool to, to kind of see. a little bit just to get you guys inspired like so I think this like I was just showing you guys was the first one that I really started to dabble with um the winterizing and like experimenting with brushes and here's another one that um 
this was super fun. It was inspired by like another illustrator. Like he had like the very similar uh, composition of this, but like, again, you can see like the brushing of just like snow and yeah. textures. And like, I can't, I think I can show you. Yeah, up here, like you see that, that's all brush. Like, wow. That technique, we have the brushes in our Photoshop. So you guys can like totally like add the speckle brush. Like I didn't even, I don't think it wasn't even an option, like the screen, like using the snow image. Like this is just, straight up brushwork from Photoshop and even here and that's why like I like to do this on Behance so, so you guys can see the detail is like see the hat like right there like if I had the image open like you guys could see like there's like dots of like just you know how snow falls on something very mm -hmm. fluffy like um and the like, same thing with like fur again like a lot of this is like based on looking at references online and that really helps like you know like realistically like little bits of snow would just sit on top of something that's fuzzy or like lifted up right and yeah it's just adding layers and it makes a big difference so yeah these are just some of the images that's so cool and like yeah yeah all of like your work has like a very painter looky look to it i don't know how to describe it like it looks as if it's been painted is that like something that you kind of an effect or is it just based on how you're kind of creating it like with your brushes it ends up being the I think result it ends up being this sort of effect probably because like a lot of the time like I'm not physically going somewhere I think if I was going somewhere and taking pictures it would look a lot more photographic and realistic I think once you start adding the layers um it starts to sort of give off this softness look like you know when you start adding like highlights and shadows it starts to almost make it illustrative and like cartoon like but like real but not like I feel like that's yeah. what happens so yeah that's like that's and then um I guess like tomorrow tomorrow's gonna be something completely different um it's gonna be sort of again like a regular image like a day image but how you make it like a night mode and I think Ooh. what's kind of exciting is because you have a lot of experience in that because you <laughs> a lot of night shots. And so I'm pretty excited to like um, do that with you as well. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. excited about that too. I'm excited to see your process and maybe like collaborate a little on it and kind of like. Yeah, absolutely. Out. Would love that. Um, I don't know what everyone else is saying, but. Yeah, Everyone's just guys, loving it. They're talking about uh, the oh CC library. God. They really love your work and, and your process. Yeah, follow me and message me anytime. You know, I'm always on Instagram and uh, anything you guys like suggest, like I would love to like create and stuff. So let me know. And um, what's um, that? And so, so um, what was I going to say? Um, do you tend to kind of... Um, I guess put everything on Behance and Instagram, or is there kind of, do you have a method to that in terms of like what you share the details so I, of? I guess like every platform, I, I do a little bit of something different, so you kind of get something out of that. So, uh, for example, um, what's it called? Like I think um, for Instagram, you can kind of see the overall image, and then uh, when it comes to Behance, you get the detail aspect of what you can't see on Instagram. Because I do a lot of detail. Like when you zoom in, you actually really appreciate all the little stuff. And then, Definitely. Um, and then with uh, YouTube, I do sometimes like to post speed edits. So that way, like anyone that's curious to know, like, you know, what the techniques I do, like you can kind of follow through. And of course, like you guys can like message me like anytime, anywhere. I'm kind of available on all platforms. Awesome. And uh, if there's any like specific questions, like I would love to help and share whatever yeah. I do know. And of course, I love to hear your like ideas too and evolve from that. Cause I feel like, I think everyone's kind of used to what they know, but there's a like, constant evolution happening with Photoshop and other apps. So I'm always like down to learning new ways of creating the same thing. For sure. I think that's the beauty of these Adobe live streams as you can yes. see everyone's different methods for creating and get tips from the chat and kind of like learn from the hosts and the guests. Absolutely. And so it's really a fun collaborative uh, method of learning. Exactly.
Uh, so one quick question for you would, is there anything that you want to kind of like hint at for tomorrow? I know you said that yes. we're going to be doing some day tonight, but maybe let's convince everyone to tune in tomorrow. You guys have to tune in tomorrow because not only am I just going to do like a day tonight, it's also kind of morphing into a retro wave kind of like, mm. I know you guys know, like the eighties, like there's a lot of like blues and pinks. So I'm going to be doing that with camera raw um, near the end of it. So you guys can see like you know how you can elevate like a night sort of mode and at the very awesome. end uh you can actually create something very similar to that without even having to touch photoshop and it'll be in like lightroom mobile so you can love it that's like i can go over and show you guys sort of how you can get the similar look and just make everything retro wave so yeah perfect yeah there you have it guys be sure to tune in tomorrow and watch the replay of this stream in case you missed how to create this snowy scene farah thank you so much for joining us today it was a pleasure hosting you and i can't wait to see you tomorrow and to see everyone in the chat and to create something amazing thank bye everyone you. bye